Welcome back to the QUT Games Degree videos, the video series where we discuss various game design and implementation topics regarding making games at QUT. In this video, we will be taking a bit of a step back, providing some of the fundamental groundwork for getting yourself settled into programming in C Sharp within Unity. By now you have gone through at least a semester or two at QUT, and are just about to get started in one of the main game engines we use throughout the degree that being Unity. You are probably familiar with some scripting, potentially even c -sharp itself, but are not sure where to begin. This is the video for you. While Unity offers a variety of different languages to program in, the one that is the most prevalent and useful to you as a designer will most likely be c -sharp. This language, derived from C++, is a powerful scripting tool for dealing with game object communication and object oriented design. We will explore these concepts in other videos. Today let's just talk about getting started writing a very basic script in Unity. When you first download Unity you will most likely get an option to install a script editor alongside Unity. This script editor is a separate program that you will use in tandem with Unity while you develop your game's content. Usually this editor is either MonoDevelop or, lately, Microsoft Visual Studio Community Edition. Both are good choices, relatively lightweight, and work well with communicating with your Unity projects. If you wish to change what the default script editor is, you can go to Edit, Preferences, External Tools, and select a different default script editor. The default script editor is used when you open a script within Unity. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is just write a simple script that will allow us to configure a basic cube's movement. So what we'll do to start this off is just add a basic cube to our environment, uh, which should look like the following. Now, this cube has a variety of what we call components within the inspector view. Now, as you can see, a transform is one of them, a box collider is one of them, a mesh renderer is one of them. Almost anything can be a component of a game object, including a script. To make a script, one of the easiest ways is to simply right click on the assets folder in the project tab, go to create C sharp script, click on it. But before you click off, you will have to give this script a proper name because the name of this script is actually what the name of the class is going to be within the script. And these need to match, otherwise your scripts are going to have problems. So don't rename a script randomly unless you renamed the name of the class within the script. I'll talk about this a little bit more in a second. So let's just name this script to something like test, with a capital T, and press enter. So now to work within this script, just double click it within your assets folder. Now this will open up the script editor of choice that you've set up or left default. And what you'll come to see is a very basic skeleton of a script that will be a template for all the scripts that you will ever make. First of all, we have some links to libraries that Unity will automatically set up for you. And probably the most important one here is what's called Unity Engine. Unity Engine will give you access to various Unity supported methods and types that will allow you to take some shortcuts uh, within using Unity as well as communicate to your game in a very specific manner. And we'll talk about a little bit about that in a second. The second thing you'll notice is the name of your script is, again, the name that we set previously 
uh, when we actually name the script file itself. So just to recap, that needs to be the same as the actual name of the script, otherwise you will get a mismatch error and your scripts won't work correctly. Following this, you'll see two methods. The first one is called start. And Unity has helped you here by suggesting that you use this for initialization. But some students don't really understand what that means. Now, when we say initialization, we mean that this is only ever going to work once and once only on startup. So what is this useful for? Well, just say you have a enemy that needs to generate a random amount of health when it spawns. This would be the place where you would put that kind of code, uh, replacing some kind of health value with some random number generator to give it a random amount of health only once on start. Update, however, functions a little bit differently. Update can be used for things like movement controls or say the artificial intelligence of an enemy, something that's going to essentially update every frame that you want to be consistent and persistent through the actual game world that you've created. As you are probably aware, all games run in a essentially a loop, they are a game engine and they are based on a piece of code that essentially will run until an end condition is met, in this case, when the game ends. So before we jump into what can be done specifically in start and update, it's useful to recap on some of the variable types that you are likely familiar with and may use in the early stages of game development within Unity. For example, integers can be declared uh, typically for the purpose of specific precision such as indexing through an array or having a set numeric value for say the rules of your game. Floats or doubles can be declared for less precise numeric data such as health or damage which may enter decimal based territory. Strings while not so common can be used for displaying or replacing text elements and keeping track of things like user input. Arrays of these data types can also be initialized, in particular arrays of game objects, useful for keeping track of or referencing multiple game objects within the game world. We will talk about this more in a later video. One thing worth mentioning at this point is that most of the variable declarations you'll do in this fashion that exist outside of methods should typically be private variable declarations. And that's just to give them a level of security uh, within and external to the scripts in question. These variables can also have what's called a default value uh, initialized with them so that throughout the existence of this script they already have a value assigned to them but you can override these later on, such as, say, in start, giving health a random health value instead. Now, something that you'll notice in Unity is if we go back to Unity, we go to our cube, and we drag the test script onto our cube, thus making it a component, you'll see that none of those variable types are actually available. So we don't actually have access to those variables and can't really manipulate our game object in any sensible way. What we can do now is actually make some of those variables public. If you make a variable public in your script and go back to Unity, in the inspector view that'll update and actually be something that we can set within the game. Now this is particularly useful when we start making different types of enemies that say, for example, have varying degrees of health or damage or whatever. However, one thing to keep in mind here is that if you go back into your script and change this value, let's say make it five, and you go back into Unity, this value does not change. As far as Unity is concerned, the value that you've set on the actual game objects that have the script attached take priority over any changes you make within this script. So don't make the mistake of changing this value and thinking that it's going to update 
in all the scripts that you've made. It doesn't work like that. Going back into our script, it should be noted that the public or private declarations can also be made from methods themselves. So these scripts are very much in the same vein as actually writing a standard c -sharp script. The privacy settings of the methods or variables you write will be essentially in the same kind of format with the same uh, level of control over them. So to articulate this, let's actually write a very basic method. And this method is going to allow this cube to move forward slightly. Now, we could just write some code within update, some sample code that will simply push this cube along what's called its forward vector. But it's usually more useful and a little bit cleaner to write a separate method for doing such specific things. In this case, we want to write a method. We'll make it a private method. We'll call it movement. So we'll make a private void movement, uh, which essentially means that there's no return type. We have no parameters in our method header. So our body can simply be empty, like so. And all we're going to do within movement is essentially tell the game object in question its current transform. We want to communicate to that. So just to articulate this, this game object has a component called a transform, which is conveniently set up by Unity to communicate to via a keyword, that being transform. So we can tell the transform.position, again, a component of our object, to plus equal, something to do with the forward vector of our cube. Now the forward vector of this cube is actually set up to be along what's called the Z axis. And this is universal for all game objects within Unity. Forward vector, Z axis. You can see that's set up there, usually a blue line. So we just want to move this cube along that direction. So we can tell the position of our cube to update to be on the transform.forward vector. We want to first of all multiply this by some kind of value. Now we haven't set up a value yet. So what we might do is just go up here, copy this line of code, and make it instead of health called speed. And we'll set that to be about 10. Now again, we can change this value anytime we need to within Unity because it is public. So we'll first of all multiply by speed and finally multiply by a strange little number known as delta time. Whew. Now what is delta time? That is always an interesting question. Essentially, delta time is the time between frames, and it's a useful way for making the various game objects in your game all move at the same rate, regardless of the performance of the computer that they're running on. So what I mean by that is if you have a computer that's amazingly good, runs at 200 frames per second, and a computer that runs at 10 frames per second, not so good. You'll find that if you multiply any kind of translation elements of your game objects by delta time, i.e. the time between frames, that those objects will actually move at the same rate. They're taking into consideration the frame rate of your computer and normalizing or using a coefficient, so to speak, to make that movement speed smaller or larger based on performance. So with delta time in question, uh, that's basically just going to be the movement code of our cube object. The final thing we need to do is actually call this method. So we're going to do that just by saying movement within update, which means every frame of the game update is going to call our new function movement 
which is going to slowly but surely push this cube along its forward vector. So if we go back into Unity now, make sure everything is set up and you're not getting any red errors. If you do have errors in your script, they'll most likely appear down the bottom here, which is actually what's called the console. If you're not getting any red errors, you can press play. And sure enough, that cube is moving forward into the void. Fantastic. Now the last thing we'll do today is simply give this cube a, a keyboard input just to give a level of agency to our cube so that we're the one actually controlling its forward movement. So to do that we actually need to make use of this library that we've got connected to our script. And what Unity Engine does is give us access to certain method calls that helps make life a little bit easier allowing hooks into the game engine that we would otherwise have to set up. And one of those is actually keyboard input. So what we can actually add to our movement script is, we're calling it here, we can just put a conditional, in this case the conditional if, that if we are pressing a button on our keyboard, in this case input.get key, that key might for the sake of making things familiar be W to move forward, then we actually translate because of that. Now you'll notice here that I'm not encapsulating that within curly braces. For single line conditionals in C sharp you can actually avoid that, but if you were to add say a second line of code, i.e. if I press the forward key and want to do two things, you will actually need to encapsulate that, but we can leave that out here. So now if we save that and go back into Unity, if we press play, the cube won't move initially, it will actually only move until we start pressing W. So hopefully even just from this basic project you can begin to see how we can string some basic avatar controls together to move around a world which will typically be the first baby steps you will make when you start work on a new game. Uh, this again is just a beginner's tutorial. Hopefully from this you can get a handle on scripting in Unity uh, with C Sharp more appropriately. There will be future videos uh, dealing with more complex topics coming up soon. Thank you.